1763, Daniel Skinner, a former sailor, settled along the Upper Delaware River in the Coshecton and Calicoon area, becoming a prosperous landowner. By the time he arrived, most of the easily accessible lumber had been harvested and the local demand for timber had waned. Skinner knew that if he could get trees from remote areas to distant urban markets, there was money to be made. The virgin forest along the Delaware offered large solid pine, oak, and hemlock trees, perfect for the mast of ships and railroad ties needed to support the rapidly expanding rail industry. At the time, there were no trains and the only available transportation was the mighty Delaware. He tried floating individual logs down the river, which became lodged in inaccessible places and proved to be a failure. Several months later, in 1764, he came up with the idea of tying timbers together to form a raft and float down the river. He built his first raft out of six 80-foot white pine poles that would be perfect for ship's mast, and with two mates, floated them down to the shipyards in Philadelphia, 200 miles downriver. The shipbuilders gave a rousing welcome when Skinner arrived in Philadelphia one week later with one mate. The other mate apparently jumped off the raft, so terrified by the velocity of the waters passing through the narrows, and tried to swim to shore, but was caught in and drowned in the Narrowsburg Eddy Whirlpool, rumored to be so strong during the spring freshet that boats could be stuck in it for days. It was this first trip on a timber raft down the Delaware River that earned Skinner the title Lord High Admiral of the Delaware River. By general consent, he was constituted admiral of all the waters of the river in which a raft could be taken to market, and anyone wishing to take a timber raft down river needed his permission. To get Admiral Skinner's permission, you had to present the admiral with a bottle of wine or whiskey, which allowed you to go to Philadelphia as an entry-level foreman. To become a steerman, you had to present the admiral with another bottle to gain his full permission to navigate all channels of the river. Every raft passing Skinner's property, called Tammany Flats, had to stop and deliver a bottle of whiskey to the Lord High Admiral. Harassment by Native Americans was common. One night, Daniel Skinner's wife had gone to bed after a few drinks. There was an Indian uprising in the area, and she would not wake up so he had to bring her to Fort Delaware and Narrowsburg, bed and all. During the uprising, they left Coshecton for Shangunk, New York, returning in 1777. His house had been plundered and burned, so Daniel rebuilt in Coshecton and continued his timber trade. Each timber raft at the time ranged in size from 16 feet to 70 feet wide and were 100 to 200 feet in length containing 30,000 to 100,000 board feet of logs. Long, heavy oars were attached to the front and back to steer the rafts. Some rafts also carried selected oak timber for shipbuilders, stone slabs for Philadelphia sidewalks, and charcoal, as well as whiskey or butter produced by Delaware and Sullivan County farms. It wasn't long before water-driven sawmills were built so the logs could be cut and repackaged in cribs containing about 10,000 boar feet of lumber and floated down the river. 10 of these cribs would be coupled together in a colt for the trip down river to the main branch of the Delaware River. Cutting lumber, skidding the logs, and building rafts on the shore of the river was winter work, taking advantage of the hard frozen surface to make moving the logs easier. Once the trees were cut, transported, and rafts assembled, they would be floated down the Delaware during the spring freshet, when the water was high enough to float the timber rafts and fast enough to get to Philadelphia in three days. At night, the rafts were often tied to the bank of the river or in a still pool of water in the river called an eddy. During the height of the industry, inns and bars close to these eddies served thousands of timbermen and reached a peak in 1875 when 3,000 raftsmen floated down the Delaware. During the economic crisis of 1837, lumber prices plummeted precipitously, which was exacerbated by local crop failures. Many in the area became desperate. 
They were saved by the plentiful beech trees of Wayne County, Pennsylvania and Sullivan County, New York, which had an abundant crop of beech nuts that year. This attracted flocks of wild pigeons, reportedly millions of birds. The birds were easily shot, netted, or clubbed by local residents who harvested them by the thousands. The birds would then be transported downriver on the timber rafts that stopped by villages to sell pigeons on the way downriver. By winter, more money had been made from selling pigeons than all the lumber transported downriver. Harvesting these pigeons prevented food riots in the area, which occurred throughout other parts of the country. Timber rafting was dangerous work. Men often fell overboard, drowning in the spring floodwaters. Many obstacles were encountered on the river, including hostile Indians, waterfalls, rifts, whirlpools, ice jams, or log jams caused by rafts that had been broken up by the river. Many men were killed, either crushed between logs in a jam or drowned by trying to break up a log jam. Dynamite was also used to break up jams, with many reports of injury or even deaths caused by blasting. At Lackawaxen, a slackwater dam had been built in order to get coal bolts from one canal to another, and timber rafts would often collide with coal barges and gunfights would break out between timber and coalmen on the river. One timber raft even collided with an elephant. The elephant incident happened in 1869, when a circus was headed to Milford, Pennsylvania from Port Jervis, New York. Concerned that the bridge crossing at the Delaware River at the time would not support the weight of the elephants, they led them down the banks of the Delaware River and into the water to cross the river. It was during this crossing when a timber raft speeding down the river in the flood currents encountered the elephant. The elephant named Tippo Shahib had recently killed its trainer and was rumored to be of ill temper. Using oars, the raftmen were finally able to force the elephant off the raft. The raft was badly damaged by the animal, but neither man nor beast was injured in the incident and the menagerie continued on to Milford and later to Honesdale. Many of the rafts never went as far as Philadelphia. Many were sold in Easton, which quickly became the largest log market on the river. Raftsmen would sell their rafts and it was cheaper to walk back to the Upper Delaware along well-marked trails instead of taking stagecoach or canal boat. The Delaware River was often called Timber River and many of the logs sent downriver to Philadelphia shipyards were used to build ships like the USS Constitution for the fledgling US Navy. The era of timber rafting lasted 150 years until every tree within the reach of the Delaware had been cut down and the land left bare. The last raft to travel down the Delaware River was in 1924, leaving Hancock and only traveling as far as Calicoon. Admiral Skinner died in 1813, followed by the deaths of his two sons within the next two years. He was buried on his farm in Tammany Flats. Legend has it that if you sit quietly on the banks of the Delaware River on a cool spring weekend at dusk, you can hear the shouts of raftsmen as they call out navigation commands. Jersey for left and Pennsylvania for right as they float down river, often accompanied by cries for help and man overboard. And if you're in the Coshocton or Calicoon areas along the river and happen to stumble across a bottle of whiskey, you'd best leave it be because the ghost of Lord High Admiral Daniel Skinner will soon be by to collect it. <laughs>